Hi everyone, welcome to Pawpaw's Workshop. Today, again, by special request, I'm making stars for a Bessie Ross flag. This is what it's going to look like. You can see the stars in the circle, and I'm using the center point here as my XY home position for my workpiece. Let me show you how I did it. Let's get started. Another request that I've had is to be able to use the easel software and make the stars for the Betsy Ross flag. So today we're going to do that. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go in and we're going to open up a new project. The flag that I use for the field, for the blue area, is 13 inches on the x-axis and 10.5 inches on the y-axis. So I want to set up the blue field to begin with and I'm not concerned about the depth at this point. Now that I've got the size of the material I want to be able to go in and create the stars. So the first thing we're going to do is select the star and we're going to bring it up here so we can see it in the center of the field. But we need to change this. This is not the kind of star that we want to be able to have. So I'm going to go up to the apps and we're going to go down to the star app, select that, and we have the five points. And I know on the last one I used 55 for that inner radius. And that worked very good. I do want to look at one thing. If you draw a straight line across here, it looks like there's a very, very tiny dip in this. So I'm going to try 56, and that makes a very small adjustment, and that does look perfectly straight. So I'm going to use, for the inner radius, 56. And we're going to go ahead and import that. So this one I can get rid of. I will no longer need it. This is the star that we're going to use. The other thing in creating the Betsy Ross flag, it's important to go ahead and set the size of the star. So I'm going to go ahead and select the shape and I'm going to lock the size and I'm going to put the width at 1.0. So that gives me now a star that is one inch. So to be able to create this circle of stars, we're going to go back to the apps and select the array app in the easel software. And here it is, the radial array. So I'm going to select that, and you can see I have a circle of stars. But I also, over here, have a number of options. We're going to need, as far as the shape count, we're going to need 13 stars. Because there was 13 stars on the original Betsy Ross flag representing the 13 colonies. And also, just a point of trivia, the reason we have 5-point stars is because Betsy Ross said... You know what? It's easier for me to sew a five-point star than a six-point star. So, thus, we have five-point stars for the day. The next thing we're going to be looking at is the array radius. This is going to be able to determine the size of the actual field. It's at five right now. I'm going to select four, and let's see how that does. It does change this radius a little bit. We're going to select on the vertical anchor. We're going to keep that into the middle. We're also going to do on the horizontal. We're going to keep that centered. Now this is important right here. The original shape position. And you see right now it is on the right. So this star, this star right here is the one that's pointing vertical. I need that up here. So I can select on the drop down menu the top and you look now this star is oriented where it's pointing straight up. That's the orientation that I need. And now these stars are all pointing the correct way around the circle. So let's go ahead and import this now into the flag. 
The next thing that I need to be able to do is take our original star and we can eliminate it. We no longer need it. Now, on this area, we have the XY axis set at the bottom left corner. And that would make it very difficult to be able to carve on our blue field and have it in the center. So what we're going to do is change this axis and the first thing we're going to do is move it to the center of the field itself. So by doing that, I'm just going to hit the edit menu and I'm going to select center of material. Now the stars are centered in the field and the field or the material size is exactly the same as what I'm going to be doing. The next thing, if you look over here at the preview, you notice that the stars are being cut all the way through. And of course, we don't want that. To be able to adjust it, we're going to go up here to the cut menu, and we're going to change that to 0.15 of an inch. And let's go ahead and take a look at this. You notice how they're rounded? Because I have not adjusted the bit yet. So you notice up here the bit is set for an eighth of an inch. So we're going to change that and we're going to go ahead and select the V bit 90 degree. So I'm going to highlight that. And now look at my star. That's the look that we want to be able to create. The other thing that I want to be able to do, you notice right here at the bottom is a flat section. I want to be able to get rid of that. So we're going to change the depth and make this a little bit deeper. So back over here, I had this at 0.15. I'm going to change this to 0.17. And let's take a look at the star. Now you can see I have a very tiny flat section at the bottom. So we're going to go ahead and change this one more time. And let's go to 0.18 and see what that does. Now that brings it down to where there's a tiny little spot. You know what? That looks good. I'm not going to go any deeper than that. So the stars now are set at 0.18 of an inch deep. They're centered on the blue field. So the only thing left now is to be able to cut this. To be able to cut it, I want to be able to have my XY zero point right here in the center. How am I going to do that? Recently, there's been a lot of discussion on the form how to put your XY zero in the center of the project. And it's really quite easy. The only thing I'm going to do is select the shape. And this is the position right here. This right now is at the bottom left hand corner for the XY zero. I want it in the center. So I'm going to select my center point. And then on the X axis, we're going to put it as zero. And on the Y axis, we're going to set that as zero also. Now, what has that done? It has moved the stars down to the center point right here. So when I go to cut this, I'm going to be able to put my XY zero at the center of the field and the stars are going to cut perfectly. It does not matter that the stars are out here on the blue area outside of the technical work area. The machine doesn't know the difference. This is my XY zero. That's going to be the home position for my workpiece. And you place this in the center and it will carve just fine. Now if you look at the preview, you're only seeing the stars in this area. Again, that really does not matter because this is the XY zero on the machine. We have our workpiece XY zero for the center. So when you get ready to carve, you're going to set up the machine right here in the center of the workpiece. That's where you're going to place the center of the bit. And then that way it will carve exactly like this. 
and we're going to carve this in just a moment. But first, how long is it going to take to carve? So let's go over here and hit simulate. And you can see the tool path that it's going to be following. And you can see down here it's going to take about five minutes to be able to carve. I know that I'm being a little bit repetitive on my discussion of this, but I also know that there's been a lot of discussion and a lot of confusion on the forum. And what I'm hoping to be able to do is clarify this and make it easier to understand. So let's go ahead and carve this and see what it looks like and how to set it up. Okay, what I've done is I've went ahead and cut the blue field and this is my 10 and a half by the 13 size. What I want to be able to do is mark the center point. And to be able to do that, all I'm going to do is just put an X right in the center of the two points. This gives me the actual center of this workpiece. This is going to be the XY0 home position for my workpiece that the stars are going to be able to carve around. Now it's important to note in the easel that white area has the machine XY0 at this point. And I know that there's a lot of people out there that always push their workpiece right down to this XY0 point and use this as their home position for their workpiece as well as for the machine. But it's really not necessary. I'm going to use my XY0 point right here for my workpiece and that's how I've got it set up in easel. This position cannot change. This position is fixed for, for the machine XY0 point. But this one, for the workpiece, can move anywhere that I want it. And I can set it anywhere that I want it. Again, this is being repetitious, but it's a point that keeps coming up over and over that's confusing for people. Okay, I've got the workpiece actually secured now. And it's just at a random location on the table. Again, this is going to be my XY home position for my workpiece. Okay, at this point, I have my XY axis set for the bit directly at this point. And I've Z probed so I have my height set. So at this point, with the material secured, with my XY axis in the home position for my workpiece, the correct bit and the Z probe being done for the z-axis we're ready to be able to carve but this is the important thing to note I have the bit directly centered over the center point of the workpiece I went ahead and speeded up the process so you could see the actual stars being cut and the tool path that it was taking. Hi everyone, thank you for watching my video today. If you like the video, please go ahead and hit the subscribe button down below and the little bell next to it so you'll be notified on the different videos that I upload. Also check out the videos over here to be able to stay up to date on the happenings in my shop. So again, thank you for watching my videos.